until recently, I've been using OpenAI's GPT-4 for most of my LLM inference work. Their LLM model is really good. The API is really straightforward to use, but the only downside is when you're experimenting, the cost of using it can really add up quite quickly. However, I recently came across this project which has helped solve that problem. It's also got a really easy to use API, but it's totally free. So this service is called OpenRouter, and let me show you how it can save a ton of money on LLM tokens. So if I click through to docs on this navigation bar here and just scroll down, they've got some documentation on how you can get started with it. But the most important part here is this sort of table, which explains every single text model that they have available and how much it costs. I'm going to scroll down a little bit just to start at the bottom. So you can see that some of these really, really popular models like Llama and Lava, Mistral, uh, all of these here, they do, they are heavily discounted. So you can see that we've got 33% off on these, 50% off on these. And what's really, really exciting is the further up you go, you can actually see there's a bunch of models they have available for 100% off, which means it's entirely free to use. If you're only planning on using the free LLM models, then you don't need to supply any credit card details. The model that I've been using personally has been Mistral 7B Instruct, just because it's an insanely powerful model. I don't think it's too far away from GPT 3.5, which is again, insanely impressive considering it's totally free to use. So just to help demonstrate the cost, if you click on activity on the account section after you've obviously signed up for an account, you can see that every time I'm using this Mistral 7B Instruct model, I'm putting 45 tokens in and I'm getting 112 out and I'm paying absolutely nothing for it. And this is the same for every invocation of Mistral 7B that I'm using. So next, let me show you exactly how it works. So first, what I've done is I've set up a .env file, which is in the same directory as my Jupyter notebook. I've created a single environment variable, it's called OpenRouter API key, and I've just put my API key in from OpenRouter here. To get your API key, you can just hop over to OpenRouter, click on keys, and then you can just hit create key. So I'm just going to go test key here. I'm going to leave my credit limit um, uh, blank. And you can see that I've just created a new key. So you can now copy that and paste it into your environment variable file. Next, I'm going to import those environment variables into my environment. So to do that, I'm going to import load.env from .env and I'm going to call that load.env function. So I'm just going to hit play there. We can see true. That means that it's imported all the environment variables. Next, I'm going to make a call to the OpenRouter API. And to do that, I'm going to import requests, OS and JSON. And then I'm going to assign a new variable called response. I'm going to call requests.post. I'm going to pass in the URL as the OpenRouter AI slash API v1 chat completions endpoint. You can actually just copy and paste this URL yourself by heading to the docs page, scrolling down, and then just copying and pasting the URL from this uh, sample code here. Next, we're going to set headers to an object, and we're going to set the key authorization to bearer, and then we're going to pass in our OpenRouter API key that we initialized earlier. And then for the data, we're just going to pass in a JSON object, which contains the key model, which is going to be the model that we want to use. We can get that model actually by heading back over to the docs, scrolling down, and then you can grab the model ID by just looking for the model that you want and then just copying and pasting this little ID underneath it. We're also going to pass in an array of messages where we're going to set role to user and we're going to pass the content as what is the meaning of life. If you've worked with the OpenAI SDK before, then this might look pretty familiar as it's formatted in exactly the same way. And then finally, all I'm going to do is call the JSON function on my response to be able to see what the result is. And now I'm just going to have a look at the results. So we can see that we've got a JSON object that is returned. We've got an ID for the generation. And you can see that we've got this content here, which is the meaning of life is a question that's puzzled philosophers and thinkers for centuries. Uh, and this is a response from the Mistral 7B instruct model, as we can see from the model property here. Next up, I'm going to show you how you can pass in a system prompt. So we're going to basically extend that exact same example that we just used ever so slightly. And the way that we're going to do that is by just adding this additional message into the messages array, which is going to be an object which has the role system. And we're going to pass the content whenever you reply, you must talk as if you are a pirate. And then we're going to then pass in that exact same prompt as before, what is the meaning of life? So if everything has worked out as we expect, then we should now have a response to this question, which is in a piratey form. And if we have a look at the result, you can see that it's stuck to that system prompt and it's responded in a way which sounds very piratey. Next, what I want to do is change that Mistral 7B model to a different free model. Now to do that, I'm just going to hop over to the open router documents and I'm just going to scroll down to that ranking list once again. This time I'm going to grab the Capybara 7B model. So I'm just going to copy this ID here 
and I'm going to paste it into the model section just here. So pop that in quotes and I'm going to provide the exact same system prompt, which is taught like a pirate. And I'm going to ask the exact same question as a benchmark. So if I hit play, hopefully we should have a slightly different response using the Capybara model. And if I scroll down, we can see that we are now using the Capybara model and we have a slightly different response. And finally, the last thing I want to demonstrate is that OpenRuta also has a way of determining the best model itself using an auto parameter. Now for a little bit of context, if I hover over this information button, we can see that it will use MIFOMAX 13B, MIFOMAX 13B 8K or GPT-4 Turbo based off the size, subject and complexity. Now in my tests, I've only ever seen it use 13B. So if I hop back over to Visual Studio Code, we can see that we are using, we're gonna try the auto model out and we're gonna pass in that same system and use a prompt just to see what we get. And we have a result. So if I scroll down, we can see the model that was used was MIFOMAX L213B, and we have a priority response. So that's working. The only thing to note about the auto setting is, as mentioned before, it will use MIFOMAX 813B, 13B 8K, or it will use GPT-4 Turbo. And if I scroll down a little bit, you might notice that MIFOMAX, which is actually just here, so this is the 8K variant, this actually is not a free model, and neither is GPT-4, and neither is the other version of MIFOMAX. So if you want to guarantee that the models you're using are free, I would make sure that you are explicitly setting the model parameter to a free model. And that's everything I wanted to cover. I thought this was a pretty cool tool and I haven't really seen very many people talking about it, so I figured I'd make a video on it. If this video has been helpful in any way, please do let me know in the comments. Thanks very much and I'll see you in the next one.